Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about balanced growth theory by Regna Nuxe and theory of unbalanced growth for UGC NET. First of all, we are going to talk about balanced growth theory by Regna Nuxe. So what do you mean by balanced growth? According to balanced growth, all sector of economy should grow together. According to balanced growth, all sector of economy should grow together. That's why we should invest in all sectors simultaneously. For example, in order to achieve balanced growth, we should simultaneously invest in primary and secondary sector. According to Nurkse, underdeveloped countries are not able to grow because of vicious cycle of poverty. And vicious cycle of poverty work at two levels, demand side and supply side. First of all, we will see demand side. Underdeveloped country have a low income. Low income result of low demand and low demand leads to low size of market. What's need to extend market if demand is already very low and low size of market lead to low investment and low investment lead to low capital formation. As we know capital formation means growth of wealth or growth of asset through investment. If investment is very low then obviously capital formation will also very low and low capital Capital formation lead to low productivity. Organization is not able to utilize skills of labor. If labor productivity is low, means if labor marginal productivity is low, then obviously their wages will also low. So we can say that low productivity will lead to low income. Again, low income will lead to low demand as a result, low size of market, and low size of market will lead to low investment. This cycle will continue run. And supply side. Well, underdeveloped country have a low income, low income lead to low saving, low saving lead to low investment, low investment lead to low capital formation and low capital formation lead to low productivity and low productivity lead to low income and this cycle will continue run. And according to Nurkse, in order to grow, underdeveloped country must need to break this cycle. But how vicious cycle of poverty will break? This theory talk about balanced growth. That's why we need to do simultaneously investment in large scale industry. For example, we need to do simultaneously investment in automobile industry, in construction industry, in textile industry, etc. Second thing, government intervention is must. In underdeveloped country, there is no opportunity of making profit in market. That's why private sector will not invest because main motive of private sector is earning more and more profit. If there is no opportunity of profit, private sector will not invest. That's why government intervention is must. Government should intervene and invest in market. Next thing, all things should be in synchronized manners. That means we should do huge investment in physical capital, in human capital, but at the same time. And more investment will lead to increase in output. As output will increase, employment will increase in economy. As employment increase, income increase, income increase, demand increase, demand increase, size of market will extend. And ultimately, all these things will lead to balanced growth. Now we will see theory of unbalanced growth. This theory is given by Albert Hirschman and other supporter of this theory are H.W. Singer, C.P. Kindleberg, Paul Streeton and W.W. Roster. According to balanced growth theory, we need to do simultaneously investment in all sector. But underdeveloped country already suffer from lack of resources. How they can do simultaneously investment in all sectors, this is not possible for them. That's why according to this theory, underdeveloped country need not to do simultaneously investment in all sector. They only need to do investment in leading sector. According to this theory, underdeveloped country only need to do investment in leading sector. And investment in leading sector eventually will lead to investment in other sector. For example, investment in automobile industry will lead to investment in construction of high, highway. It will lead to new investment in rubber industry. It will lead to new investment in tire industry. It lead to new investment in petroleum product. 
or we can say the investment in uh, electricity will lead to investment in small scale industry so we can say that according to this theory underdeveloped country only need to invest in leading sector and eventually investment in leading sector will lead to investment in other sectors this theory talk about two series of investment convergent series and divergent series in case of convergent series sources of investment comes from private sector in case of convergent series sources of investment come from private sector that's why motive of this investment is earning profit on the other hand in case of divergent series sources of investment come from government side that's why motive of this investment is social welfare based on these two series we classify investment into two parts first is social overhead capital in short we can say the soc second is a direct production activities in short we can say the dpa social overhead capital or we can say the investment on social overhead capital is done by government for example investment on roads investment on irrigation power transportation and communication and uh, investment on dpa is done by private sector for example investment on manufacturing man investment on agriculture investment on shopping complex investment on trade and tourism and uh, this theory talk about uh, unbalanced growth not balanced growth and in case of unbalanced growth we need to do investment in leading sector and eventually investment in leading sector will lead to investment in other sector for example investment on roads irrigation power transportation and communication eventually lead to investment in manufacturing agriculture shopping complex trade and tourism now with the help of this diagram we will see how investment on soc will lead to investment in dpa soc means social overhead capital as we earlier discussed and investment on soc is done by government dpa means direct production activities and investment on direct production activities done by private sector now we will see how investment on soc will lead to investment in dpa in this diagram this or line represent uh, balance means all point on this or line represent spc is equal to dpa suppose our initial equilibrium point is r now government of country do expenditure on soc which is equal to rm this rm increase in investment in soc will automatically lead to investment in uh, dpa which is equal to rk and investment on dpa will continuously increase until we reach at this equilibrium point r1 now suppose government of country uh, again do expenditure on soc which is equal to r1 m1 and this r1 m1 investment uh, in soc will automatically lead to investment in dpa which is equal to k1 r1 and uh, investment on dpa uh, dpa will increase until we reach at this equilibrium point r where spc is equal to dpa we can uh, choose other path also suppose we do expenditure on dpa and deep expenditure on dpa will lead to expenditure on soc this theory talk about two types of linkage effect first is backward effect second is forward effect backward effect means automatically increase investment in earlier stage forward effect means automatically increase investment in later stage we clearly understand with the help of one example suppose a country increase investment on coco mask and coco mask is very important material which we use for making chocolate and increase investment on coco mask automatically will increase investment on chocolate it will be called forward effect because making chocolate from coco mask is one stage ahead this is later stage that's why it will be called forward effect on the other hand for uh, making coco mask we need coco butter for the production of uh, coco mask we are increasing investment on coco butter it will be called uh, backward effect because uh, doing investment on coco butter for uh, making coco mask is uh, one stage earlier uh, this is one stage backward that's why it will be called backward effect so this is all about balance and unbalanced theories i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video bye take care